Hi everyone, how are you doing? This is Petal. Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. Hope you guys are having a great week so far, whatever it is you're doing. Um, as you know, we here, um, we are here and support the Duchess, Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry, Meghan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the Chickens, all of us here at Sussex Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, this is Facts and Two Cents, just in case you're visiting for the first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you are visiting for the first time, definitely go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. And, you know, we've had a, quite a few videos before, so feel free to go perusing through our other videos and listen to them as well. And also, please like and share this video. Help us to build our platform. Help us to build our channel. And if you're able, join the Two Cents crew. Um, that would be awesome as well. But what is going on in the world of royals, specifically What's going on with our faves? Well, nothing. <laughs> our faves are hanging out under a tree, being quiet and minding their own business. And you know, one of the things that's really funny is watching um, the press just completely freak out. They have no idea what the Sussexes are doing. The Sussexes aren't responding to any of the nonsense that they've thrown. I mean, they, as we've seen for the last how many weeks, they've been throwing just about everything at the wall to see if something sticks. I mean, to the point where, you know, they were like, well, let's see a, a way that we could deport Prince Harry. <laughs> and it's just like, what? I mean, the stupidity of all of it is ridiculous. Um But yeah, they are panicking because all of a sudden, all of their narratives about balconies and you know Sussexes wanting to go into balcony or whatever it is they are demanding this and demanding that and no one has any evidence of anything because no one even knows if Harry and Meghan said yes or no and so now it seems like they're all of their narratives are like um so what do we come up with now to keep our trolls you know on side what do we say about the Sussexes because you know, now it's to the point where they are literally begging the Sussexes. I just saw a video a minute ago where, um, you know, I think it was um, oh, Talk TV, I think it was. And she's like, well, you know, why aren't they responding? Why aren't they just saying yes or no? I mean, if you have a, a wedding, you want people to respond. You want people to um you know, they want them to RSVP so you know what, you know, what you're doing with seating or something. And so now they're at the point of begging the Sussexes to respond. And I love the Sussexes are like, whatever, they are doing whatever it is they're doing in Montecito and not paying them any attention. And frankly, I'm petty. So my thing would be Sussexes don't even respond to them. You know, whether they send an invitation or not, not even respond. It's like, whatever, we got stuff to do. We got a birthday. We have the birthday to plan on that day. We don't have time with your nonsense. And so it just, <laughs> it's really funny just watching the freak out about, and it's just like, you know, I always think about the, uh, the things that we value in life and, and, and the weird things that British people, especially British royalists, really, you know, there are a lot of people in the UK that don't subscribe to any of this mess and uh, this royal nonsense. And I always, it, it's always baffling to me some of the things that they value, you know, for example, the balcony, <laughs> I would never, ever get over, you know, they were just so desperate for, for the Sussexes to be banned from this balcony. And here is our wonderful faves looking at each other there. Um, you know, hopefully that's how they are in Montecito, just like loving, you know, loving each other and just not paying attention to the nonsense that's going out there. But one of the things that's like, oh, it's like the press are so desperate and their trolls are so desperate for the Sussexes to be banned from this balcony because this balcony is the, and it's like, I, like, I don't, I mean, I can understand why the royals, would think that's a big deal because what they are literally doing on the balcony is looking down on you. <laughs> Figuratively and literally looking down on their subjects. And so if you're one of those, you know, said subjects, why would that be something that you would be all excited about? Like, why would you be excited about these people who you didn't elect, you know, 
who are using your taxpayer dollars and, and things that you're like, wait a minute, I can't even feed my family and I'm paying you, you know, why would that be okay with you for them to be on this ridiculous balcony and looking down on you in every single, you know, however way you want to look at that, looking down on you, why would that be something you would be excited about? Again, I I could see why the, the you know the royals would be excited about that because they get to look down on their minions <laughs> and they get to feel important all up there on the balcony while they wave at the pathetic subjects at the bottom. I could see why they would be interested in that. I could see why that could be a you know a high for them. But if you're one of those minions, if you're one of those subjects, if you're one of those people who didn't elect these people to whatever position they're in. Why why are you excited about this? Why does that not make you feel like hmm, there's something not quite right about this? <laughs> you know, and why would you be all of, oh, they should ban the you know the Sussexes from the balcony? Meanwhile, again, we don't even know the Sussexes hasn't responded to any of this stuff. <laughs> you know, who knows if they even got an invitation yet? And nobody knows anything. But it's just very funny to me, the things that they value. This this balcony thing. And again, this is just the jubilee that nobody asked for. This is the jubilee, nar jubilee's narrative all over again. Because why British reporters are too lazy to come up with something new? This has been, you know, they use the same headlines that they've used since Princess Diana, you know, and before. And so they're just too lazy. I mean, they're, they're not journalists. So, you know, they're... I, you know, literally, they need an improvement to get to be a hack. I mean, <laughs> getting to be a hack for them is is an improvement to where they are right now. You know, so it's just <laughs> it's just really funny to me. Like some of the the, the, the ridiculous things that they value. Like, oh, where are they going to be seated? Are they gonna, they're going to be seated in the back, or they're going to be in the second row? They are now second row royals, and it's just like. But you're not even in the building, though. <laughs> you, I mean, I could understand why the royals could have this uppity attitude, which they have. They're snobs. And I could understand why they could have an issue. Well, oh, they're second row royals. But why are you a subject who are not even invited to the party? <laughs> you're not even a citizen of your own country. You're a subject. You're a minion, you know. Why is that an issue for you? And shouldn't you have an issue that they are being snobbish to somebody in their own family and they would think of them as a second row royal? Thank you, Camilla Tomine is a liar. That's her term, the second row royals. And so it just is very... <laughs> and, you know, Harry talked, and I think Harry mentioned a little bit about these people, that they literally feel like they behave like somehow they are part of the royal family and it hasn't dawned on them yet that they're not and that they, they look stupid behaving this way. They haven't figured that out yet for some reason. And so it just, it's very funny to me, just <laughs> some of the things that they value and that is so important to them. And it's like, honey, you're not, you're not part of this family and maybe you should be grateful because they're a mess, you know, but you're not even in the building. You're not invited. You're not going to be invited. So why would you, you know, why would you be mocking someone who was actually invited? You know what I mean? It just, it makes no sense, but that's what they do. Anyway, moving on from that, but you know, as I said before, our fans are doing whatever it is they're doing in California. Hopefully they just stay there and don't go anywhere close to that mess. But you know, whatever they do, I will respect it. But wherever they are, doing whatever they are, just stay there. Let the British press, you know, let them keep freaking out and having to come up with new things to complain about because, well, they're not getting any, uh, they're not getting any headlines or exclusives. So who knows? Who knows that what they will come up with by the end of the day? I'm sure by the time I come off, you know, come uh, finish this podcast, they will come up with some other headline or some other nonsense to blare across because, you know, they have to keep talking because that's how they make their money. You know, they put Harry and Meghan's name and they get clicks. They know that. So anyway, so moving on from our faves, we'll let them just, you know, stay under their tree in Montecito. What else is happening? Oh, 
I did this. If you guys, I know Lydia had, um, she had posted the link in the show notes the last episode. And I, and I, I'm sorry, in our live chat, uh, the last episode. So I'm going to put the link to this in our show notes as well. Um, if you haven't voted, um, please go ahead and vote for Harry and Megan and uh, the time person of the year. They are like, it feels like a million people there. And um, so definitely Harry and Megan are part of it. Um, they, so definitely go on there and vote for them. So yeah, cast your vote for our faves. Definitely, definitely. There are some people on that list. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but our faves, yes. <laughs> because we are biased and, you know, whatever. We just love them and we don't love the other people. So there. Um, actually, I think the only royal that was on there, other royal that other than Harry and Meghan, I think it was King Charles. And nobody else from the royal family made that list. <laughs> Very funny when you think of the others. But anyway, yeah, only King Charles is on that list other than Harry and Meghan. So there you go. Um, moving on, what else is happening? Oh, this is happening. This dropped yesterday. Um, you, you guys remember this. Well, this specific thing didn't drop yesterday. This was last year. Uh, we remember this. Uh, Prince, <laughs> Prince William and Kate visiting um jamaica on their shameless offensive tour last year or very or charmless i should say offensive tour and so this was one of their the, actually their second stop after the you know the um they got protests in the first stop. And so they're in Jamaica here. And this is uh, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness meeting Prince William. And, you know, <laughs> in that very awkward meeting, one of the things the Prime Minister said, um, uh, let's just read this little blurb here. It says, Prince, I'm sorry, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has told the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge that Jamaica is moving on and will soon shed the British monarchy to become a republic. Mr. Holness made the comments as Prince William and Kate Middleton made a courtesy call on the office of the prime minister as part of their three-day visit to Jamaica. And, you know, we remember all the mess that happened on that charmless offensive tour and the protests, the, you know, the, the shaking their hands through the fence, Kate sort of pulling away from the, you know, sports minister who didn't want to be touched by a black person, you know, <laughs> all of that mess. And then, you know, this very awkward, um, yeah, you don't get to sit at a table. I'm just going to tell you before we sit down, you know, I'm not even going to offer you water, but right off the bat, I just want you to know right now, we're moving on and we're kicking you guys out. <laughs> we're kicking the monarchy out of our country. It was hilarious it was like yes it was just embarrassing because you know we know other nations in the caribbean after that charmless offensive tour uh this you know going the way of jamaica and barbados they're like mm, yeah we want out as well so um this happened on march 23rd last year 2022 2022 and so very so for this whole year we'll be like okay jamaica come on come on come on what's up come on so then yesterday this dropped and it's just like almost a year to the day Andrew Holness posted this to Jamaican, I'm sorry, the government of Jamaica is embarking on the most comprehensive constitutional reform work to transform Jamaica from a constitutional monarchy to a republic. And you can see the date at the bottom there, as you can see the date, um, again, the date from last year was the 23rd. And then um, the date that he is dropping this almost a year to the day, March 23rd, 2023. He's like, we are working to transform Jamaica from a constitutional monarchy to a republic. The goal is to ultimately produce a new constitution of Jamaica, establishing the Republic of Jamaica and affirming our self-determination and cultural heritage. Let's begin the road to republic. Hashtag constitutional report, uh, reform, road to republic. And so, yes, I am so happy to see this. I, you know, one of the things also last year, I was like doubting, man. I was, I remember um, Steph, uh, I'm sorry, not Steph, Chef coming on, Chef Anise from Jamaica. She said, no, 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 it's going to happen. It's going to happen. She was so Right, and she was so confident that Andrew Holness is going was going to keep his word that he was going to do it, and now here he is. 
on the road to Republic. And so, Stephanie, thank you so much for your confidence in your prime minister. And so, this, so he announced this is the team. And I'm just going to move myself out of the way so you can see everybody properly. Uh, yep, there we go. And I'm going to move up. There we go. There we go. So this is the team that he has chosen to, um, you know, to start the work and to, you know, be on the road to becoming a Republican. It says, today I announced the membership of Jamaica's Constitutional Reform Committee to be chaired by Honorable Marlene Malahu. That's the first picture at the top, um, top left. And it's going to be chaired by her. And Casey J. Um, I'm sorry. The Honorable Marlene Malahu Forte, uh, KC GMP MP Minister of Legal Constitutional Affairs. And um, and um, so this is the whole team, and it's it's made up like it's just like the you know, across the board, other MPs, some of um some from the um reparations committee, um, you know, legal scholars, I mean, uh, you know, youth ad advocates. So it's it's like a broad spectrum of people um that are that's made up that made up this team and that's going to, you know. They are going to be the one that's going to get Jamaica to become a republic. You know, it's just, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to see the faces and to see black and brown faces there. Yes. You know, I love it. I absolutely love it. So this is the team, guys. They are going to be the one working to getting all the legal stuff and all of that stuff together, rewriting their constitution. And it's just, um, you know. It's going to be amazing. So, yeah, this is your Constitutional Reform Committee. And they are going to be the ones that will help Jamaica and, you know, to become, to be what it wants to be, you know, self governing. <laughs> and so it's very, very, very exciting um, to see. And um, this is a picture of some of them. This is not the whole team, um, but there is uh, Prime Minister Holness with some of the team. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Andrew Holness um, is uh, this afternoon named Canadian Professor Robert Albert among the 14 member Constitutional Reform Committee as the country moved toward Republic status. So um, it's just, it's so exciting to see that, um, you know, that it wasn't just words that, it, that they really meant it. They, you know, and I, I think after that shameless offensive tour, it was like, you could tell, it was like, okay, we're over this. This is, we're done. We are so done. And it's just, you know, I know they have been really shoring up their relationship with the U.S. They've been really, you know, especially um, with our Vice President Kamala Harris, who is from Jamaica. And so they've been really shoring up their relationship with the U.S. And, and Andrew Holness have been here a couple of times and really um, just, you know, fortifying that relationship um, since the, they're going to be away from the U.K. So... But, you know, after that, then it's just like, get rid of this, um, you know, Commonwealth nonsense that we're still trying to figure out, like, what's that about? But right now, on the road to Republic. So congratulations in advance to all our Jamaican peeps, our awesome brothers and sisters in Jamaica. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so excited to celebrate the day that you have cut the umbilical cords <laughs> from the UK, that you have snipped it and are independent, you are free. You can finally say we are independent as opposed to, you know, we're independent, but we still have the, you know, we still have the, the umbilical cord tied on to the, to the UK. I look forward to your day of freedom. So um, yes, Jamaican peeps, very, very, very exciting. But what else is happening? Oh, we're going to leave Jamaica and head on over to Paris. <laughs> and not that this is a joke, but I'm laughing a bit about Prince Charles. So King Charles, not Prince Charles, King Charles. King Charles is supposed to be in Paris on Sunday, supposed to be there with Camilla to do this, you know, a state visit and to sort of shore up their relationship um, with, uh, with France and all of that, especially, you know, since... Um, the UK is no longer a part of the EU. So they want to, you know, shore up that relationship. Yeah, we're still friends, whatever. And so it just happens to the last, what, week and a half, two weeks, I think, or maybe a week and a half, whatever, especially in Paris, 
it's just been protest after protest because, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have heard what happened in Paris with um, uh, uh, Macron, the leader of or the president of uh, France, who has decided that he is going to raise the retirement age from, I guess, 62 to 64. And people are not feeling it. People are, the French people are not feeling, so they have been protesting, rioting, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So as you can see, some of the pictures, you see riot police, people on the streets, they are burning things in the streets, they, day and night, it's even today, you know? I mean, garbage collectors refuse to pick up garbage. I mean, you can see the pictures at the bottom. So it's a whole bunch of stuff going on in Paris at the moment. And they are just, you know, again, one of the things with the whole pension thing is that, um, or the retirement age, is that, you know, Macron went ahead and did it without, I guess, the parliament voting. He sort of just took it up on himself. And, you know, and he barely survived a no confidence vote a couple of days ago, a few days ago. So there's a whole lot happening and the French people are not feeling it. They're like, no. So whether Macron lasts or not, who knows? Um, but within this whole drama, especially going on in Paris, this is where Charles and Camilla are supposed to descend on Sunday. And the people are like, no, we are not feeling you. <laughs> we don't want you here. You know, no. And so Associated, a lot of people are reporting it, but I got it this from Associated Press. I'm just going to move my banner there so I can read the whole thing. Um, let's see. Let me put that banner back there. There we go. So this is from the um, the Associated Press. These are just two clippings from the article. It says, no red carpet, French unrest impacts King Charles III trip. The unrest in France is tarnishing the sheen of King Charles III's first overseas trip as a monarch. Which, with striking workers literally refusing to roll out the red carpet amidst pension reforms, um, pension reform protests, and calls for the visit to be canceled altogether. The British King is scheduled to undertake a trip beginning on Sunday on behalf of the Prime, of Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's government, with hopes, uh, um, which, which, which hoped a glamorous royal tour would underscore efforts to rebuild Anglo-French ties uh, that were frayed by the UK's decision to leave the European Union. And uh, the bottom it says, French labor union uh, G G CGT announced this week that its members at Mobil Mobilia National, the institution in charge of providing red carpets, the literal red carpets they'll be walking on, red carpets, flags, and furniture for public buildings would snob a Sunday reception for the king upon his arrival in Paris. We ask our administration to inform the service, well, services concerned that we will not provide furnishings, red carpet or flags, a CGT statement read. The, uh, the Elysee Palace, um, the French president's official residence said, instead, non-striking workers would set up the necessary um, accoutrements for the trip. So basically they're saying that, you know, we'll use scabs to set this up if the, you know, because the striking workers are not going to do it. And so, uh, you know, apparently I, I read and I didn't see photos of it, but apparently people are blocking the, um, by the airport as well. So this is, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. People are not happy. And obviously, if they're going to be raising the age for you to collect your pension after you've worked and worked and worked, and without even so much as a vote, um, you know, people don't get a chance to vote or voice their, you know, objection to it. And you go ahead and your, I guess it is a parliament, I guess, their government didn't even give them a chance to vote for it, but he just took it upon himself and people are not happy. And I can understand that. I could totally understand that. And so they are not feeling Macron right now. And so in the midst of all of this mess, King Charles should be descended on Paris. <laughs> and it's funny with this because in Paris, this is what, you know, again, this is what was happening in Paris. And he's supposed to go to different places. And one of the places he's supposed to go to is Bordeaux, which I, I guess that's wine country. And so there, the rich ones over there in Bordeaux are like, oh, we love Charles. A lot of us, we have a, an English connection. You know, I guess, you know, 
rich people and they're thinking like, ooh, royalty with our wines. We could be, you know, they're thinking of making money off of this stuff, I guess. And so any kind of royal connection will help them, you know, but the people of Paris are just like, no, we're not here for that. We're not, I mean, there have been like people, they're burning so much stuff in the streets of Paris that apparently, I mean, I've never been to Paris, but the pictures I've seen of Paris, um, these streets were usually pristine. They're beautiful, clean, and whatever. No, not so much anymore. And as you can see, I mean, the garbage collectors are refusing to collect garbage. I mean, people, you know, this lone person trying to douse the fire into the street, and you have police in riot gear. And I mean, there's so much drama going on there right now. And so the people are not having it. Even today, they're having a massive protest as well. So we will see if Charles will continue with this trip that's supposed to be a glamorous affair. Like, I don't I don't know how you can do that when this is happening and not incite more rioting and, and not really irk people even more to go there and, you know, have this glamorous state event when people are voicing their frustration and their anger because of this. And so, yeah, it just is very... <laughs> Let's just say Prince Charles has issues, kind of some issues, you know. Um, when he's at home and he goes anywhere, you can count on the Republic and their people to go protest, not my king. And now people are literally in Paris are saying, no, don't come. This is not a good time for you to be here. We don't want you here. And again, if people think um, that they're doing this glamorous stuff, it's like, you know, it would really incite more, uh, not, and I say writing, but more protests, you know? So yeah, it's just, it's very, very interesting that's happening with this. <laughs> I was like, okay. So don't be surprised if you hear, I mean, I'm sure many of you might not even, not even realize he was going to be going to Paris, but this popped up and I was like, well, that's interesting. So mm, we will see if he will make it there or just skip Paris and go to Germany and hope it calms down in Paris and do that coming back from Germany. I don't know. Who knows? But we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. But anyway, but I just think it was just funny that the people who literally put out the red carpet are like, uh-uh, we are not literally put, you're not going to be walking on our red carpet. We're not putting it out for you. I just, it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, but, but, and you know, the funny thing about that too, just not to go on and on about it is that, they, you know, um, I read an article that they're like, you know, the French had a great relationship with the queen. Apparently I didn't realize that. That, you know, that was one of the places she traveled the most to. And so they had a great relationship and they loved her. But Charles does not, as with most places, does not have the same, you know, they don't think of him the same. They don't quite care for him, you know, definitely not as much as they care for the queen. And this just makes it worse. So, yeah, that deference that people gave the queen. Nah, Charles doesn't, he does not benefit from that at all. So there we go. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> As if he doesn't have enough issues um, in, with Paris. This happened today where the Republic group, um, they went to the church that they're going to do the coronation. <laughs> and they were protesting at the church. And you can see my little red circles. Those are crowns that they, I think that's like one of the symbols that they're using. Um, one of the logos, the upside down crown. And so they have, I mean, I'm like, how much did they pay for these crowns? They have these crowds all over the floor, and um, and that they are with their would you vote for him? And obviously, we know that you know, child, they are on an unelected power, and so it's just it, again, you know, wherever they go, they're gonna have a republic people. And we talked about republic uh, recently. You know, is it fake or is it you know, is it real or fake? Whatever they're doing. But they are at it, and you know they are like the only ones who are there really protesting something. So yeah, this is the Republic group, and they're upside down crowns. So Charles got issues at home, and he's got them abroad. So you know, 
Moving on to something more pleasant, Invictus. Invictus Nigeria. I love Invictus Nigeria. They are so awesome. I love their um the, their post, their Twitter post that they do. But something really fun and exciting for these guys. It says Ikena left Dean Wright from the Invictus team Nigeria off to Colorado in the U.S. That's right. They are here right now, actually. They are in the U.S. for their first Invictus Endeavor. This is a fantastic opportunity for them to join over 100 other wounded, injured, and sick, sir, uh, sick, um, wounded, injured, and sick veterans using the power of winter sports to aid their recovery journey. So they are in Colorado right now, and this is their wonder <laughs> This is their first time being out on the snow. That must have been so excited for them. And they are practicing for, you know, we remember they are, uh, you know, the adaptive sports, the um, Vancouver Games are going to be next year. And so, I'm sorry, 2025. And so they are now, you know, them and a hundred others are now for the first time ever on snow and you know i guess they're trying out different um different routines they're trying out different sports to see which one it is they love the most that they're going to take part in in 2025 and i just think that is so so cool and so look at them having a uh, really excited um dean is like you know because dean has no arms and so he has um as person in the back holding on you know holding on so and this was his first time snowboarding you know so akina akina um on the left it says on the move skiing for the very first time i don't even know if they've seen snow i mean i don't, I don't know um if it's their first time either seeing snow or being a depth you know most likely being on snow whatever but it's their first time skiing and so they're trying out these new sports and um in the middle it says our boys have arrived in colorado safely ikea would be trying adaptive skiing for the first time and dean Heading off to do snowboarding. All the best, guys, and enjoy the experience. And so they are having a grand old time. There are videos of them really having a great time um, on the snow. It's <laughs> just great. And under right, it says, Dean, off to a great start trying out snowboarding for the first time. And so it's just really, I mean, I'm telling you, Invictus is the joy on these men's faces. It's just unbelievable how excited and just so much fun um, that they are having. And it just really shows, again, just how sports can just completely transform your life, you know, um, when they, you know, when we heard Nigeria was going to be in it, they had never tried any of this stuff. They had never tried sitting volleyball or wheelchair basketball, nothing. And in the last few months, it's to see them do all of this stuff and just, it really has, give, it's almost like giving them a new lease on life. And it's th that's exactly what you want to see with veterans, that they're all of a sudden, they're like, whoa, we're in the U.S., we're practicing in two years, we're going to be representing Nigeria, you know, and what an incredible thing. Again, Dean has no arms and he's snowboarding and it's just like, well, like, well I would love to see how he's going to do it, you know, and it's just, it's amazing to see um, what they're able to do. And so kudos to Team Nigeria <laughs> and have fun guys. It's just so adorable. I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. And Dusseldorf, <laughs> I love this. And I love um, Peace, you remember Peace, she's been on the show before. Um, or shall we say the Duchess, the Duchess H underscore desires. Um, but you know, you remember Peace. Um, so Peace posted this um, on um, on Twitter and she says, oh my word, the Germans do, don't do things in half. I can't wait to ride this train. Prince Harry is not a toy soldier. That is why they will pull out all the stops for him and the veterans. And if you can look on the train, you recognize these logos, Home for Respect, 9-16-09-23. Um, um, Invictus, the day Invictus starts and you can see the train is going by. So the video, <laughs> 
I pulled this off of the video, you can see the Invictus game. So this train has all, you know, this is the Invictus train and it'll be going. So um, when she tweeted that, Invictus um, responded to her tweet and this, um, Invictus Dusseldorf responded to her tweet. And she says, oh, it's always wonderful to spot the train in the wild. Did you know that it will run and on the line going to the central station directly um, going from the central station directly to the venue at Merkerspiel Arena, which is where um, uh, which is where the Invictus Games will be. So that is the train that's going to be taking people from the central station straight to the arena, and it's all decked out in Invictus. So Dusseldorf, uh, they are they got their thing on, you know. And so um, Peace wrote this. She's like, salute to Brigadier General Alfred Marsh. Marsteller, the brains behind IG23. He told me last year that IG23 in, 23 in Dusseldorf will blow your socks off. The train is just the beginning. And that's, if you guys, I'm sure you remember that picture um, last um, the at The Hague, um, she took that picture with him and I shared it on this podcast before at the time. So, yep. So there she is with uh, General Alfred my, uh, General Alfred Marstella. <laughs> and so, yes, peace. And peace is definitely going to be there as well. And do so dope. So very, very exciting. And then I saw this and I cracked up. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. This is hilarious. Um, so... <laughs> Invictus, you can look at the translation done before. So they have a lot of different positions, like volunteer people who had different volunteer departments for the games. And so one of the things, one of the volunteers, it says, our volunteer team has grown. There is now a volunteer coordinator. There are now volunteer coordinators, volunteer managers, and a fashion designer. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> a fashion designer? Really? And so, and that is said fashion designer there. <laughs> you would not have guessed, right? It says, we would like to introduce you to Sergeant Major Jorg. I'm assuming that's how he says his name, Jorg or Jorg. Um, he is our man when it comes to clothing. Clothing? Yes, exactly. He makes sure that your outfit not only looks great during the games, but it's also sustainable. From the design to the procurement of clothes, Jorg controls every step because you are the figurehead and number one contact point at the games. I'm sorry, the, the games part came out, came out of there. But yes, so Jorg would be making sure all the volunteers are looking amazing. <laughs> and they want to make sure you look great and amazing and on point for the games. So... Dusseldorf has a fashion designer on, just on staff. I mean, it is just, I just thought it was just hilarious. How like, oh, hey, hey, who would never have thought there would be a fashion designer <laughs> in army clothes, but here we are. <laughs> so I just love it. I absolutely love it. I love that the fact that they are um, just having so much fun with this and just, you know, I just, I'm like, oh. It's just great. I mean, I can't wait for the game. So it's, yeah, very, very exciting and <laughs> really fun. <laughs> Anyways, finally, I mean, very short day, really not much happening. But finally, we did our Two Cents Club vote for the, you know, our Two Cents Book Club vote for the next book that we're going to be reading. And as you can see, Viola Davis Finding Me has beaten Michelle Obama's The Light We Carry by 56% to 44%. So this is what we will be reading for our next book club. That is right. The winner, Viola Davis Finding Me. I already have the... Um, the audio, you know, I have already have the audio version, so I am very much looking forward to reading about her life and here. And it's so wild. It's like I'm realizing all these people, you know, whether it's celebrities or I don't know, reporters, whatever. Like I literally have no idea about these people's lives at all. Like you see them all the time, and you're like, oh, I love this person, and then you realize, like, oh, I don't really know anything about this person. I mean. We just talked, you know, talked about Tyler Perry's, you know, like I always loved Tyler Perry as a person and what realized I had no idea who he was, no idea about his life, nothing, zero. And that is the same with Viola Davis. 
nothing. I know nothing about <laughs> nothing about her life. Michelle Obama, I read her book, but the, the the book before, so I you know I I remember that about her life. But yeah, Viola Davis, nothing, no idea who she is and you know what her life story is. So I'm very much looking forward to this, and so hopefully. You will as well. So our next book club, as you can see, is coming up Saturday, April 22nd at 1 p.m. So definitely, definitely read it. Have fun with it. Hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to chatting about Viola Davis's life. And yeah, very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. It's so funny. Um, I just finished um, Anderson Cooper's book. It's so funny. I had Vanderbilt on the list as well. Nobody chose Vanderbilt. I was just like, oh, okay. It has zero percent. <laughs> but I just read Vanderbilt, which is, again, um, the Vanderbilts um, who basically built New York and, you know, built a lot of um, the infrastructure in, in, in the U.S. Um, and that is a wild story. Um, Anderson Cooper, who, you know, obviously I was partial to that because, you know, this interview with Prince Harry. And so I was like, oh, I read about Anderson's family. And oh boy, <laughs> that is, I mean, that is a history lesson. It is amazing, that book. And, and I, I realize again, you know, I always loved Anderson Cooper, had no idea <laughs> about his life, other than I knew that he, you know, was part of the Vanderbilt family, but I knew nothing about them, nothing, zero, you know, and, um, and so it was really interesting, you know, and again, with him, it was something that he is now learning. He didn't know, he didn't grow up knowing who they were either. And so it's something that after his mom died, that he finally started learning about his family. And so um, it was really, really good. So, you know, very exciting after, you know, after you read Finding Me, maybe that's a good book to read as well. I, I, I listened to it really fast. So in like two days I was done. So it was just very, very exciting. So I, after that, I'm very excited now to go on to reading Finding Me by Viola Davis. So very, very exciting. And so again, I hope that you, um, you know, I hope you have fun reading it and learning about her. And again, our um, book club is going to be Saturday 22nd at 1 p.m. So I look forward to all of you being there and coming on and chatting with me. So anyways, that's it, guys. Again, it's a very, very slow news day. Um, thank you so much to our awesome moderators, Lydia Church, Nelly, Karen M, Cookies and Cream. Thank you guys so much. Um, uh, for everything you do in our chats, in our live chats, especially. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, again, <laughs> could not do this without you. Seriously, couldn't. Thank you to also, um, sorry, thank you also to our Two Cents crew members who support the channel on a monthly basis. I appreciate every single one of you so much for helping me to be able to afford to do all the things we do to get this, you know, this, these uh, episodes out on, um, you know, on the different, on the platforms and using the software that I use. Thank you so much for helping me to be able to afford it. And also to our uh, Gold Star supporters who support the channel, whether donating in our chats, you see them donating, um, whether it's super thanks, super chat uh, donations, or you support us um, via PayPal or Cash App or merchandise, all the ways that you support us. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I could not thank you enough for your support. So um, anyway, guys, thank you so much. Um, I will, my schedule is still crazy. So I will be able to do a live, hopefully tomorrow. Um, I hope, fingers crossed. Um, but, uh, you know, until then, have a fantastic time. I love you all. And I will see you next time. Bye.